makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. You know, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half-hour's entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Vasco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, <laughs> it's a funny thing, but you can tell what an American is doing by the way he's walked. If he's a walk very fast, he's going to see his girl. If he's a walk regular, he's going to see a friend. But if he's a walk slow and sad, he's going to pay his income tax. <laughs> and right now is the income tax season in America, Mamma Mia. Why is it called the income? I don't know. Because nothing is coming, everything is to go out. <laughs> This week, all Americans, they're busy figuring out how much money they got to send to the government and how they're going to live and what they're going to live. Yeah. I'm learned in my night school class that the reason they got taxes is so the government can keep working. Mamma mia, if they was to depend on my income tax, the government would be out of work. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't know why I don't make more money, Mamma mia, but I'm a don't. Like every good businessman, I'm got to what they call a ledger, where I'm keeping my figures. On the left hand, I'm write down the money I'm paid out. On the right hand, the money I'm took in. So far this year, I'm never used my right hand. <laughs> well, I'm going to go to my night school class now, Mamma Mia. And maybe my teacher, Miss Spalding, is going to tell me how I'm sure to figure out my income tax. America, I love you. You like a papa to me. Promotion to all. all right, class, quiet, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Harwick? Here. Mr. Olson? Here. Mr. Schultz? You got to ask? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz, what makes you so exuberant today? Oh, I got it a nice check from the government this morning. Oh? Income tax refund? <laughs> Who knows? When they give, I take. <laughs> hey, Miss Balding. Yes, Mr. Basco? How am I going to figure out my income tax? Do you know where I'm going to do this? What's to figure out, Luigi? Send in your bank book to the government and pray they won't ask for more. <laughs> Schultz, you are not helping, Luigi. That's right, you're only... Now, class, that will be enough. Mr. Basco, I'll take up your problem later. Now, class, today we have a civics lesson about the government and its expenditures. Now, we all know that taxes are necessary to pay for government. So who can tell us some of the ways our government uses your money? Mr. Harwood? I don't even know how my wife uses my money. <laughs> oh, come, Mr. Harwood. Well, they use the money to build things. Yes. Build what things, for instance? Oh, lots of things. Would you say public works? Certainly the public works. How else could they pay taxes? <laughs> Class, let's stop this foolishness. Now, who can tell us some of the ways in which the government spends our money? Well, can't anybody tell us where the government's money goes? Doesn't anybody know? I think this calls for a congressional investigation. Mr. <laughs> Schultz. Sure. Miss Spalding, if you get stuck, just call on me. There he goes, the Swedish Dr. IQ. <laughs> Ignore him, Mr. Olson. You may answer the question. Oh, oh. Last night, besides studying our regular lesson, I studied my encyclopedia. 
And I found out the government spent over $14 billion on the Army and Navy, $300 million for post offices, another $300 million for public roads, over $6 billion for the Veterans Administration, $650 million for the State Department. Oh, listen, stop! Leave over something for England! <laughs> Miss Polly. Yes, Mr. Basco? How well am I going to go there should have figured out the my income tax? He's back. <laughs> well, there are many places you may go, Mr. Basco. There must be hundreds of excellent accountants right here in Chicago. Certainly, Luigi. If you want, I can recommend you an accountant. Accountant? Uh, Luigi Horowitz is right. You go to an accountant, he figures out everything statistically. And you know just what to pay the government. After class, Luigi, I'll give you my accountant's card. Honey, thank you, Horowitz. Do you think this accountant, he's going to figure out the good for me? My Luigi. What if he don't? What if the accountant shortchanges the government a little? Can the government slap a heavy fine on you? Will the FBI investigate you? Will they clap you away in jail? Sure, sir, will they? Luigi, if they didn't, who would go to see an accountant? <laughs> Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hey, what are you doing with that book under your arm, a little banana nose? <laughs> well, that's my business, the book of Pasquale. I'm going to figure out what I'm owed the government and the taxes. <laughs> Look at what's supporting the United States. <laughs> Broken down a little cabbage puss. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, if America was to depend on you for a living, it would have to move to Mexico. <laughs> and by the way, if uh, you're going to figure out your income tax, so why are you walking in the street with your business book? How am I going to see accountant? Accountant? Uh, yeah, that's uh, how do I say? He's a recommending me somebody. He's a set. Fellas, you take my assets uh, equal with my deficits, uh, make a trial of balance. Then he's got a figure from uh, my debits and the credits. That's the matter, Luigi. You swallow an ad in the machine? <laughs> They should have put you in charge of the Marshall plan. In two months, it would be the Morris plan. <laughs> Ooh, what a boob. Horror, it's a count of the fists, it's the puss, it's... <laughs> Luigi, always you in trouble. You running around and there, here, everywhere for information. When I'm a sitting here with the facts in my head, and you could have come straight to the dope. <laughs> You know, you're so right, the Pasquale. Nobody's a bigger doper than you. <laughs> That's a funny thing. When I'm a say it, it's a come out of different. <laughs> ah, Luigi, forget this account. And I'm going to do all of the work for you for nothing. For nothing? Yes. Thank you, Pasquale, but... Hey, do you know how to make our tax so good? Luigi, if I didn't, would the government send three or four men every year just to look at my tax returns? <laughs> Then maybe you can help me move with my tax, Pasquale. Sure, little pumpkin ahead. Luigi, is a nothing I don't know about figures and the numbers uh, and the sadistics. Now, the first thing that the government wants to know, how many dependents you got? Dependents? Yes. Uh, in your declaration, you've got to tell them exactly how many dependents you got. This law was passed in 1776, a declaration of dependents. <laughs> Oh, sure. How many dependents I got, Pasquale? Not enough. That's the way they got you, Luigi. You living alone, a miserable little bachelor, making millions of American girls unhappy by not to get married. So the government gets a revenge on you. A revenge? How? They make you fill out the long form. <laughs> you see, normally, since you're only five foot six inches, you would have fill out a shorter form. <laughs> But to punish you for being a spinster, they make out a bigger list of taxes for you. You're stuck with a longer form. Pasquale, is this really true? What do you think? I'm smart enough to make all this up of my own head? Luigi is a dark, dark days ahead for you, unless... Unless what? Unless you surprise him by suddenly getting yourself a new dependent. <laughs> but, Pasquale, where am I going to get a dependent? <laughs> Marry my daughter, Rosa. <laughs> 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 
Back to the long farm. <laughs> Pasquale, answer is still a no. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go... Now, wait, wait. Give me that business book of yours. I'll help you out anyway. I don't know why I got such a soft spot in my head for you. Oh, thank you, Pasquale. <laughs> Some business ledger. Nickel and notebook, and on the cover is a picture of Gene Autry. Uh-huh. <laughs> you keep it quiet while I figure out your tax. All right, thank you. Let's see. You earn $400 last year, spend $825. That's 825 minus 400 Carry down a five, push over one to zero. <laughs> Squeeze in a six and move over to four. <laughs> now we press it down to seven. Add the luxury tax for being a bachelor. Times it by 10% amusement tax. Add two and a half a city sales tax. Mm-hmm. Now we bring down the four, scratch out of this two. <laughs> and we add a zero for every year you've got to wait to before you're a citizen. That's a come out to... Uh, 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 Luigi, I've got a terrible announcer for you. You know how much you owe the government? How much? $300,000. <laughs> $300,000? Pasquale, that's impossible. I wouldn't have believed it unless I did it myself. <laughs> well, Pasquale, I can't pay. What am I going to do? Stop begging for mercy. Pay your taxes like every honest American. Hey, but Pasquale, you think maybe you pushed in a couple of zeros or too much? <laughs> Look, you tax dodger. Your troubles is just the start. Treasury departments are very strict. Comes a March 15th. President Truman is look over the books. He's going to say, Morgan Thor's $300,000 are missing for that new battleship. Where's the money? Morgan Thor's going to say, sorry, Harry. Bosco is a no come through with his money. <laughs> and Luigi, on account of you, Admiral Halsey is a got to live in a rowboat. <laughs> and another thing. You ain't going to be tried in a plain, a little court like the Supreme. You're going to be tried in a special income tax court for broke immigrants. The CPA. CPA, what's that? Court for poor aliens. Before we return to Life with Luigi, I'd like to say a word about Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum and the enjoyment it can give you. It's fun to sink your teeth into a good piece of gum and chew for as long as you want. What's more, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Gum is chock full of lively, real mint flavor that cools your mouth, freshens your taste, and sweetens your breath. So enjoy chewing Wrigley Spearmint Gum often. It costs so little and tastes so good. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, I'm sitting here in my store and I don't know what to do about the pain of my income tax. $300,000. Mamma Mia, I'm a new taxes who was a high in America, but they're not so high. Anyway. Luigi, my fellow boob. Oh, hello, Schwiss. Luigi, why have you got your suitcases packed? Where are you going? Alcatraz. <laughs> what? Pasquale says that's where I'm gonna go. Luigi, don't you think you would have more fun in Florida for the winter? <laughs> Ach, you little schnitzelkopf. What's this talk about Alcatraz? Has Pasquale been teasing you again? He's a figure out I'm a government of $300,000. $300,000? Luigi, for that, the government would sell you a half interest in Fort Knox. <laughs> Where did Pasquale get that figure from? Well, uh, he's a told me I'm bachelor, and if I'm a Mary Rosa wholesaler... <laughs> then, then the government is going to excuse the luxury tax and let me sign the declaration of independence in the 1776. <laughs> oh, that scheming Pasquale, has he got you for shimmered? <laughs> Luigi, don't you know you can't possibly owe the government $300,000? It only seems that way when you send in the check. <laughs> then, sure, so how much am I owe them? 
How much should the government answer from me? Oh, that's very easy to figure. How much money did you make last year? Four hundred dollars. That's what the government wants. <laughs> Huh? Now, smile, Luby. I'm just making a joke. Look, the chances are, with the money you earned last year, your taxes can't amount to more than a few dollars. A few dollars, sir. Sure, sir. How am I going to know for sure? For sure? For sure nobody knows. No, no, wait, wait. Into my head, an idea just pooped. <laughs> Why, why don't you go straight downtown to the income tax department where the government man figures you out your taxes for nothing? The government man, he does this for me? Sure. Well, uh, Schultz, uh, that's a wonderful idea. I'm going to go right now. Good. Now, cheer up, Luigi. Smile. Be like me, happy. Always laughing. <laughs> <laughs> My rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> Ach, that little Wiener schnitzel, all was... Hey, zum... Schultz! Oh, hello, Pasquale, why don't you stop frightening Luigi? What's the idea telling him he owes the government all that money? Oh, I was uh, just a pull in his leg. And what did you expect to fall out? Three hundred thousand dollars? <laughs> now, hold your horses, Mr. Delicate. Why, it's lucky man. I came along and told him to go downtown to the income tax department. Why don't you ever give Luigi some sensible advice like that? Schultz, look on my side. Have you got a 250-pound daughter you're trying to marry off? <laughs> that poor little Luigi, between you and Rosa and the income tax department, maybe he is better off in a nice, peaceful place like Alcatraz. <laughs> Goodbye. So Luigi's going to downtown to the government tax man. Hmm. Taking us a business ledger with him. I gotta do something, huh? I gotta. Oh, oh, oh. I'm so smart, I should have my head examined with this. <laughs> Where's that the Monopoly game that Rosa gave me for Christmas? <laughs> sure, if this little scheme will work, so Luigi's gonna be happy to settle with the government for only $300,000. <laughs> Pasquale, I'm going to want to talk to you. I know you saw. Luigi, I was only having a fun with you. Please, forget it. What's happened is all the past is the water under the bridges. <laughs> Pasquale, I'm going to downtown right now to see any come attack some man. We'll go back. Luigi, I said I was sorry. Be man enough to accept my apologizers. All right, Pasquale. All right, I apologize. <laughs> Good. Now, take easy. There's no rush. Sit down and we play a little Monopoly. Monopoly? What's that? It's a game. It's something like that card game I taught you. Kanatsa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Only this Monopoly game is going to teach you all about high finances and big businesses. So when you talk to the income tax man, you want to sound like a greenhorn. Oh, good. Hey, now I'm going to spread out this Monopoly board. Hey, does it look very pretty? What's this again, Pasquale? Monopoly. Oh. Now, look, you see these little things here? Uh -huh. They stand for buildings, you uh -huh. see? And these are little blocks stand for railroads. These are for banks. Uh -huh. Now, to start the game, you get four railroads, two hotels, six blocks of real estate, and $75,000. Pasquale, that's, that's a game? That's all right. You're rich. <laughs> Remember everything you own, Luigi? Well, uh... uh maybe I'd better write it all down in your business ledger book. In, 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 my, in my ledger book? Oh, don't worry. I use this empty page here. All right. All right. But, Pasquale, how we know who's the winner of the game? Oh, we roll the dice, see? Oh. Idea is for you to win over all of my buildings and my railroads... And every time you win, <laughs> I'm going to write it down in your ledger book. <laughs> Understand? Uh, sure, sure. Hey, Pascal, it sounds like a fun. Come on, let's play. All right, I'll roll the dice. All right. Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Luigi, you're just the one half of Michigan Boulevard. <laughs> hey, I'm lucky. 
lucky, huh? Yeah, sure, wait now, write it down, and you bug. All right. <laughs> hey, Luigi, if you're lucky, keep some by the time you see that income tax of man, you're going to be a millionaire. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be a millionaire. <laughs> Thank you for your help, Mr. Byron. Quite all right. Glad to be of service. Mr. Basco? Present. I mean, uh, here I am, uh, Mr. Taximan. I believe you're next. Won't you come in, please? Oh, thank you. Now, where are your records? Huh? Didn't you bring your records with you? Oh, you like music. <laughs> I meant your tax records. Oh, sure, sure. Here, my business book. I see. Don't you have a checking account? No. Um, I had a checkbook once in my first week in America, but uh, no more. Why not? Well, there's only 20 checks in a book, and I'm going to use them all up. <laughs> well, you could have gotten another book. No, I'm going to use up all of my money, too. Oh, I see. You said before that you did make out 20 checks. Sure. Where are the stubs? Huh? Don't you have the stubs? Uh, no, I'm going to have a smoke a cigar. <laughs> Never mind, never mind. I'll go over the figures in your book. All right. Uh, you're not going to find it too much of that. Just tell us how I'm made of $400 and I spent the eight to twenty-five. Seems to me that you're underestimating yourself. Hmm. How much money would you say you're worth, Mr. Basco? All together? Yes, all together. How much money are you worth today? Wait, I'm looking at my pocket. <laughs> oh, come, come, Mr. Basco. Let's not be modest. It strikes me as rather peculiar that a man with your vast resources should use such a simple little ledger book. Hey, mister, what are you talking about? Here it is. You own the Metropolitan Life Insurance Building. <laughs> me? I'm lucky if I can make a payment on my Blue Shield the medical plan. <laughs> Don't you own the entire block on 1890 North French Boulevard? What the... Hammer don't even own a bottle 1890 French dressing. Now, don't pretend ignorance. Right here in your book, your holdings are spread all over the world. Four million dollars in cash in the California bank. 135,000 shares, Santa Fe Railway. The Waldorf Astoria Hotel. And three coffee plantations in Brazil. <laughs> I'm on all this? Yes. If I had a cigar, I would offer it to you. <laughs> You're wealthy. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> Mr. Basco, let's not waste any more time. It's all down here in black and white. Impossible. I'm going to use a blue ink. <laughs> Mr. Basco, you're treating this entire thing as a game. A game? Oh, hey, hey, that's right. Let me see those pages. Oh, Mr. Income attack a man. That's a Pasquale's fault. It's a monopoly. Oh, monopoly, eh? Don't you know that's a violation of the Sherman antitrust law? Oh, no, that's how wrong you are. I'm a got to no antitrust. I'm only got to Uncle Pietro. <laughs> <laughs> and all he's a got is a goat. Oh, please, please, Mr. Nina, come a man. Please, believe me. Luigi, what's happened? I'm going to come down here as fast as you call me. I'm going I'm in the worst trouble of my life. In a come a tax man in that office, he says I'm owed a government to one million dollars because of what you wrote in my book from that Monopoly game. You mean to say he's a no-believer it was a game? No, Pasquale, please, please, you got to go in his office and explain everything. <laughs> oh, how sweet. Luigi, for 16 months, I've been trying to get you in this bear trap, and now... You caught it. <laughs> well, what do you say, my son? All right, to call in the bear, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> Rosa! 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 You called me, Papa! <laughs> yes, my little bunny face. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. Hello, <laughs> Luigi. Hello, Rosa. Rosa, 
Louise is ready to marry you, and this time is for real. What's the racket out here? Oh, Mr. Income Tax Man. I'm a Pasquale, the man of Luigi's a call down to display to you about the Monopoly game. See, I even brought the game with me. Handwriting in that book is mine. Empty out of Luigi's pockets. You're going to find nothing but breadcrumbs for the birdies. Well, if you say so, all right, Mr. Pasquale. I'm glad you explained the whole thing to me. I guess it was a little far-fetched. Sure, sure. Look, uh, I'm a Luigi Bosco's a good Sumerian, and I'm a ready to stand and pay whatever income tax he's uh, owe you. Well, that's very nice. Naturally, he doesn't owe us a million dollars. <laughs> I have the new figure based on the revised estimate. Good, I got my checkbook ready to pay you. How much is the amount? Eighty thousand dollars. I'm gonna. <laughs> Just make it out to the Department of Internal Revenue. Rosa, come over to me. We're late for supper. Oh, supper? How about a Pasquale, please? What about you promise like we wasn't made up? Don't you want me for a son-in-law? Never saw you before in my life. Don't ever want to see you again. <laughs> Besides, for $80,000, I can get Errol Flynn. Come on, Rosa. <laughs> Goodness, he was really mad, wasn't he? Yeah, I think maybe he's never going to ask me again to marry Rosa. <laughs> oh, Mr. Internal Man. You're, <laughs> You're real, real fine a fellow for helping me to play such a joke on a Pasquale. Well, when I saw the joke that he had played on you, I just couldn't resist helping you get even with him. <laughs> You know, you know, people, they say you want to come tax the fellas, you're very hard. I think you're very soft. Well, thank you. Mr. Basco, you understand that what I just did was highly irregular and unofficial. Please don't mention this incident to anyone. Oh, don't worry. I'm happier than my friend that should be Uncle Sam than a Papa Pasquale. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is to turn out all right with the government. And later, the tax man has figured out the my tax for the 1949. I'm going to read to some place that the government is expected to take in this year 46,361,740,121.56. <laughs> Mamma mia. I'm proud to tell you that the one dollar and the 56 cents is what I'm paid in. <laughs> You're loving the son of Luigi Vasco, an immigrant. Folks, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they'd like to remind you that Wrigley's Spearmint is a good, wholesome treat for the whole family. Children like it and grown-ups like it. Best of all, a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a perfect treat to enjoy between meals. It's refreshing, it's satisfying, yet it won't dull the appetite. So always keep a few packages of delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. Let your family enjoy it often. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mac Benoff. <laughs> Jay Carroll Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Spaulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Friends, the Wrigley Company invite you to listen to their other program, The Gene Autry Show, every Saturday night over most of these same CBS stations. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.